Good evening, Krzysztof. Good evening. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. I actually, <clears throat> I actually feel a little sick, which is amazing. I don't normally, normally feel sick, but uh, I do. Well, that's a little strange. Uh, but I'm gonna just pretend that I'm not sick, and I'm gonna keep teaching today. In the middle of the last class, I felt. Uh, after the last class, I felt like maybe I would just go to bed and have somebody else teach. But that's not the way I do things, so I'm going to just teach myself here, and that's why I prefer prefer to do it. So what happened? <laughs> I don't know. It just happened like an hour, a couple hours ago in the middle, the beginning of my last class. I'm like, I felt I feel sick. It was weird. And so <laughs> yeah, like uh, I had a cough, and uh, I have a cough, and a sore throat, and feel kind of tired, and yeah. The chills, kind of a little cold. So, but I have tea here, or a hot toddy, as it were. Hot toddy. So it's like a tea with honey and lemon and other goodies. Hot toddy. And I'm just going to keep a keep a good attitude. And sometimes, if people get sick, they feel sick in their mind, and they get sicker. So I'm going to just pretend that I feel fine. <laughs> that might work. I think your brain has a lot of power to influence your body. So, and I don't normally get sick. Like, never. I can't remember the last time I was sick. So I'm going to just pretend that I'm not sick and I'm going to work a normal day. Unless I can't. But I don't think, it's not, it's nothing bad. It's probably like a cold, so... I just don't. I don't normally get colds. Uh, how about you? <coughs> mm, I'm totally good. <laughs> and how was your weekend? Uh, nothing special. Quite chilling. So mm. Mm. Yeah. it's yeah. autumn. So <laughs> yeah. What, what can you expect? Not uh, good <laughs> to travel. To go mm -hmm. even you have uh, a little sun uh, it's quite chilly outside uh, and uh, if you have well, wind is uh, can uh, cool, uh, cool your bones <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah I know that windy a windy autumn day or winter day is can be very even chill. if you know temperature is not so uh, even not on minus minus, but uh, this uh, wind can cause this so that you <laughs> yeah something yeah. Through, through your flesh you feel to bones. <laughs> yes, I understand that very well. I understand that very well. There is a scientific term for that feeling in English. Um, if uh, when the temperature is one temperature, but then when it gets windy, it makes it feel much colder. <clears throat> there's a, the, there's a, the term for that is a wind chill factor. So, for instance, if it's, if it's uh, five, <coughs> five degrees out, five degrees, and it's very windy, the wind chill factor, it may read this on the weather forecast, it might say wind chill negative 10 degrees or something. Or something. Yeah. We have the same. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. So. It's not only wind, but uh, moisture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yep. because, you know, uh, if uh, it's a dry, uh, uh, how to, frozen. <laughs> freeze, uh, it's not as bad like a wet uh, freeze. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, that that uh, humidity will will increase increase that. Mhm. Mm yeah. So, uh, but otherwise things are good. It's, the weather is fine. It's got, it's been a little uh, dreary, a little rainy and cloudy, kind of dreary. That would be my forecast for the day. I think I think that's our week. A lot of 
like a little bit of little showers here and there, and cloudy and kind of kind of dreary. It's a perfect day to be sick, <laughs> and a dreary day. I'm feeling a little dreary myself. But now you are uh, more south than you used to be, so um, I think it's supposed to be more <laughs> warm <laughs> there in Atlanta than you uh, have been. It is. That's true. It is warmer here. If I went to Wisconsin right this minute, it would be colder there probably. But it still gets. It is still. We still have the seasons down here. We still have fall and winter and everything, but. It's just not as extreme, so the the winters are milder, and it's not cold really. It's like today. It's well, let's see. I went, uh, Do you have uh, uh, snow there in Atlanta? No, no. I mean, not today, and not usually very often. Uh, we don't. If we do get snow, it might be once or twice in a year, and usually not very much. So. It's not warm enough, not cold enough for that. For instance, <coughs> right now it's 13 degrees Celsius in Atlanta. Yeah. So it's you know, it's not bad, which is about normal I think for this time of year. It'll get cooler uh, in December and January and February. So, mm, yep, I am feeling sick. I was thinking this toddy would would help me out, but we'll see. Hmm. So, um, uh, so our we have a high intermediate. I've had very quiet classes today. My last class was just me and Susu, and uh, it was an inter intermediate class uh, about Bill Murray doing tongue twisters on a children's program. It was a great class, but it was just me and Susu. So it's a quiet day for Klingo. And yesterday, yesterday, I had a lot of new students, which was interesting. I taught more beginner classes. That might be why. So I had some new students yesterday. That was interesting. So today, uh, we're going to look at some Peruvian like fashion photography. But it's not typical fashion photography. This is like the fashions of the traditional people like the the native people in Peru, in Peru not like models but like the typical uh, everyday people the native people so it's kind of a and I think it's done by a fashion photographer but he decided to take pictures of real uh, ethnic Peruvians in their traditional clothing so it's kind of interesting and uh, I don't know. Sometimes the grammar and the skill level do not fit. <laughs> so like, I'm not. Good uh, I see that. <laughs> a lot of times, yeah. Like I intermediate and I'm not did not. Yeah, that's like that's beginner grammar. That's too easy. Mm, but you know everything you can have in some mm, level. Mm -hmm. Harder and easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, my last class with Susu was intermediate, but we talked about used to, which is pretty easy. But then I, she actually still had some questions about used to, so it was actually a good, good class. And we had to spend 20 minutes on used to, but it actually was good. We spent the entire 20 minutes talking about used to, and it was useful. So, but <clears throat> thank God we only have five minutes to work on this. Um, I was going to have the students ask each other am not and did not questions right now, but <laughs> there's only one student. Although you could ask me an am not or did not question. Uh, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, I'm not, did not, but uh, sometimes you use uh, ne negation mm -hmm. without uh, this. Uh, uh, be and do. Mm -hmm. Okay, for instance? Mm. Mm. Uh, as, especially you... Uh, huh. I <laughs> think about it. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, I have to think, yes. <laughs> think about it while I greet our friend uh, Zohrab here. Hello, Zohrab. 
Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you. Fine. Mm -hmm. Actually, I kind of lied a little bit. I'm a little sick, but I'm still... Uh, I'm feeling... My mood is good, but my health is so-so. Um, I haven't talked to you <coughs> in a while. Um, uh, what's new with you, Zohrab? Uh, thank you. Uh, for uh, not specially changing in uh, in my life. Just uh, I do my uh, everyday work, job, and uh, other. There is no specially. Mm -hmm. Just kind of regular, regular life. Nothing special. Mm -hmm. okay. What about your weekend? Did you do anything interesting this weekend? Uh, I have already say uh, our our last uh, lessons. Uh, at the weekend, uh, I do my second job. Mm -hmm. uh, and but uh, uh, this weekend, I uh, not only I do not only my job, uh, my car uh, was uh, my car broke down. Uh, mm -hmm. That is why I uh, wanted to. Uh, Make my car. Mm -hmm. you fix your car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to fix it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's too bad. That's always that's always too bad. Uh, so, uh, so we have uh, Shishtaf has some examples of something here. Yeah. So you promise not to interrupt me anymore. So you don't have uh, be, and you don't have do to make negation. And then I would say I did not interrupt you. You uh, you pre you promised to do not interrupt me. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. That's <coughs> that's <coughs> excuse me. That's correct. That's correct. I would. Um, that's a correct sentence, and I would answer if I wanted to negate that. I'd be like, "No, I, I didn't interrupt you." So, um, so that works. Um, but it's a little different because it's not a question. It's no, a question. I don't uh, have uh, this about question, but oh, 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 oh. Um, I thought that you always have to uh, use auxiliary verb or be uh, to make negation, like. I don't like uh, ice cream or something like yeah, this. Vanilla well, ice cream, yes. Yeah. So well, you have to use do not or uh, I'm not happy, yes. Yeah. Well, I think I think the difference here. This is more complex, and I think our main verb here is promised, and then that verb is is positive, not negative. So uh, you promised uh, to not interrupt me. You promised not to interrupt me. Is correct. Um, so it's a different construction. It's a different kind of grammar. It's not M not did not. Or the second one, yeah, like I warned you not to cross the the river. Yeah, and that's the same thing. Where warned is the main verb. He intends. Yeah. So the mo there's a modal. Yeah, he intends. There's these modal verbs, and that make it focus becomes on the, the modal. And so you're adding. You're making it more complex. And so when you do that, <clears throat> which we don't cover in this grammar skill, oh, but when we do that, uh, then we don't use it to be verb. Uh, I dare not tell him what he did. Jim just continued to read, paying no attention. Right. All of these uh, are more complex, and they have extra verbs. They focus on the positive, not the negative. So it's something they, they positively didn't do. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure grammatically how to explain that besides the fact that it's uh, more complex and 
That's so right. they are right, yes? They're all correct, absolutely. I dare not tell him what he did. Um, so you don't have to use uh, this auxiliary verb to make negation. Right, not for a complex sentence. If it's a simple sentence, like, you know, he did not take the pictures, or I am not hungry. Those are simple, simple sentences. If it's a, you know, you have to then it's you have to follow the rules that we're going to teach today. But <clears throat> when you're getting more complex, then things then then the grammar gets more complex and the rules change because it's a different kind of sentence and you're using different different uh, parts of speech. So that's more that would be more advanced grammar. And that's why the rules are different. Mm -hmm. But those are correct. All those sentences are correct. Promise not to. Yeah, and I'm not sure how to. Yeah, again, I'm not sure how to define it. Uh, hello, Koro. Hello, hello. How are you today? Good, thank you. Mm -hmm, good. Um, how was your day today? Normally. Normal, no, no special. Here is a normal weekday. Mm -hmm. Pre, pre Christmas. It's a Christmas environment. Oh really? Hmm, a little. Mm -hmm. a in your city or in your home? How is it? No, no, in my home, no. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no. no. So you don't decorate for Christmas. No, no. In on the stores at in the supermarket or <laughs> yes, the yeah. things are in other place where where they are normally and <laughs> mm -hmm. so do you the not music is other. Yeah, yeah. Same in the United States. If you go to the store you'll find all that too around now. Get get people in the mood to shop to buy things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, what about in your home? Do you do you not celebrate Christmas, or do you just don't decorate for Christmas? So? No, personally, I I didn't I don't uh, celebrate Christmas. I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am a very little ex exception, but I I don't uh, believe in these things. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all right. Um, I know some people who don't believe in many things about Christmas, but they still celebrate in a different way. Mm -hmm. like, like, I still, like, you know, and now we're getting into personal beliefs, which I don't normally like to do, but I'm, I don't necessarily believe in, like, believe in the, the scientific truth of, like, what happened and this, the Christ story and, like, the, you know, all that stuff. But I think it's, a, it's, it's an interesting and beautiful story, and I think Christmas is a beautiful time with, like, beautiful lights and great food and happy people and and uh, giving and, th and so I like that about it. I don't necessarily need to believe in the theology or the um, religious aspects of it, but, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's a beautiful idea and uh, like fable kind of. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I was kind of brought up with it, but my family was not very religious either. But so, for, so Christmas is different for everyone and some people just don't celebrate and that's okay too. Um, so um, anyway, um, uh, so we should be talking about am not and did not. Not the. Um, can you uh, follow this one? I have new one and with question. Okay. Uh, can I ask you to not tell uh, my secret anyone? Mm-hmm. I ask you to not tell. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's just like the other ones because ask becomes. Can I ask you to not tell? Because they're having. It's a complex sentence. As ask, it's like I do. Uh, he didn't ask. He did ask. But, but you ne negate tell. Yes, not mm -hmm. tell. Mm -hmm. Right, because um, I wish I, I wish I was able to put it into the right terminology, but. That's, when it's a secondary verb, um, you don't need the, the to be, because uh, it's infinitive, I think, is why. When it's a secondary verb, it has to be infinitive, I guess. To interrupt, to cross, to tell. Yeah, I think that's maybe, the, I think that's the rule. When the So the first one is positive, and the next one is infinitive. When you're negating, it's not uh, 
not uh, to be you're not conjugating it for a person you're conjugating it for the for the sentence structure I think that's the best way I can explain it you know these are things that I was never really taught very much I just learned <laughs> from living in the United States so, but all your sentences are correct uh, so let's take a quick look at the at the basics of negation m not did not and then we'll continue on and talk about this Peruvian art photography uh, <coughs> Coro, will you read the first part please how is the text to read teacher oh do you not see it what? No, where no. is the text? Oh, uh, every other time. All right, so I'll have to restart my uh, browser. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. No. Great. How about that? I have to read now, teacher? Yes, please. Okay. First, negation is saying the opposite of something positive. She eats, she eats apples, apples. She does not eat apples. Apples. Apples, sorry. Mm, I sing at home. I don't sing at home. Note. You can use contractions in the examples given above. She doesn't eat apples. I don't sing at home. Right, and that's the more common. common. Second. Okay, I have to have Shishtof, the next one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Second. Use the to be verb in the present tense, construction, subject, I, she, etc., plus is, am, are, to be verb, plus not, plus verb. I'm happy. I'm not happy. Jenny is Korean. Jenny is not Korean. It's the same for the present progressive. Jenny is watching TV. Jenny is not watching TV. They are planning. Pl they are playing tennis. Uh, they are not playing tennis. You can make a contraction with not. Are not. Aren't. Is not. Isn't. Okay. And good. Coro. Uh, Third. Use do not and does not for sentence in the present tense that. Do not have to te sorry the to be verb mm -hmm. construction subject da and does not a verb. I watch. I don't. I do not watch. They like movies. They do not like movies. For third person singular, use does and remove the third person s. For the verb, she does not watch TV. Not she does not watches TV. You can make a contraction with not. Do not, don't, a does not, doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. And finally, fourth. Fourth. Use the to be verb in the past tense. Construction, subject, I, she, etc., plus was, were, to be verb, plus not. I was in, the, uh, in New York last week. I was not in New York last week. Uh, they were at the concert. They were not at the concert. It's the same for the past progressive. She was cooking when I called. She was not cooking when I called. They were studying English yesterday. They were not studying English yesterday. 
You can make a contraction with not. Was not, wasn't. Were not, weren't. Good. All right. That's enough. Um, there's actually another one, but we'll stop there. We've talked about that plenty. And we already know it, but it's good practice. And also, it's good for the people watching. So let's take a look at our article, uh, which is an uh, interesting uh, art exhibit about Peruvian-style uh, traditional dress. And uh, we'll take a look at some nice photographs and see what this exhibit is all about. Sorry, teacher. What means Peruvian? Peruvian? Yes. Oh, somebody from the country of Peru. Yes. Ah, okay, Peruan. Okay. Um, like I'm American, and someone <laughs> okay. from Peruvian. Yep. Peruvian. Okay, nice. <laughs> like you're Spanish. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's a good. That's a valid question. All right. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, that's crazy. Look at that. Very colorful. Um, I will also share the link in case someone wants to see it. Alta Moda exhibit pays tribute to Mario Testino's Peruvian roots. The famed fashion photographer strays from his typical celebrity subject matter to shoot the brilliant colors, patterns, and fabrics worn by locals from his native Peru. Alta Moda is quite different from the portraits I am perhaps best known for, famed fashion photographer Mario Testino said of his latest exhibit. Taking a bold approach in his newest venture, Testino strayed away from his typical subjects, celebrities and fashion models, and traded them for natives of his home country, Peru. Alta Moda, which translates from uh, Spanish as high fashion, examines traditional Peruvian dress from the Cusco region of the country. Any questions so far of vocabulary? What means a bold approach in his newest venture? A bold approach. A bold approach. Okay. So in this context, I don't know. Bold approach. Christoph, do you have any ideas what that might mean? Mm. Like uh, <laughs> strengthen for approach. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Approaching. What is the what is he, what is the approach here? Approaching. How are they using approach? Um, uh, you get something in, in some way. <laughs> okay. So approaching this approach is uh, kind of like a direction, taking a direction in, in his art. So he's like he's known for. A, he's a fashion photographer. Let's see what happens if I. Let's see what happens when I when I type his name in. We'll see fashion. This is what he normally takes pictures of, okay? Yes. Fashion photography. Celebrities, <laughs> models. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. So, you know, famous people. And so this is very bold. It's risky. It's uh, you know, it's totally different. This bold approach. So he's taking it in a totally new way, a totally new manner of bold approach in this newest uh, exhibit. And strayed is both used here no. and as a phrasal verb here, but it's exactly the same meaning. The non phrasal and the phrasal are the same. You stray away to stray. What does that mean? Mm. Uh, go to place <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, exactly. This is a place he doesn't know. He's doing something really different. Because stray is like uh, get lost. <laughs> right, exactly. But in this case, like it's uh, going without the direction. Mm -hmm. 
uh, where your foot uh, lead you. <laughs> right. So let's say, yeah, let's say I move in a different direction, which is... Yeah, so you see something, oh, this is funny, oh, I will go with this way, oh, this one is good. Yeah, and like a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what's over here? And they walk a the wrong the wrong direction. And so uh, that's the f literal. And stray is often used figuratively here. It's like he's straying away from his normal fashion celebrity photography, but he still makes beautiful photographs. Mm -hmm. I usually try to capture the moment, Testino said. But with this series, I wanted to do something very different. Not just with my own work, but also with the practice of photography. I tried to fit as much time and history into each frame as possible, from the traditional and festive clothing to the Shambi backdrops and the Peruvian people in them. Wow, that's really cool. Beautiful. Testino traveled to Peru numerous times over a period of five years to explore the variety of costumes that exist in the region, looking at the traditional and festive dress of both males and females. Through further examination, he pulled inspiration from the 27 images of the history of Peruvian photography and the work of Martin Chambi, one of the first major Latin American photographers who was known for capturing pictures of the local landscape and people. Destino even utilized a piece of furniture from Shambi's family in the backdrop of the images, emphasizing the bright colors and ornate fabrics of the Peruvian wardrobe. Destino highlights everything from the Montera, a hat decorated with plumes that men wear during the carnival. Oh, how do you pronounce that? The chacha? Uh, to the numerous polleras, or skirts worn by, worn by women to exude social status and wealth. Let's look here again. Notice the backdrop. The, what's in the behind? They're talking about this backdrop. Is the backdrop colorful? Mm. Not really. It doesn't look very colorful. So there, I found he chose to use this traditional uh, backdrop to make the colors even look more brighter, look even more brighter, because it has a very kind of quiet and dull backdrop so that these colors pop even more. That was his choice. It makes for a really striking and high contrast photograph, which fashion photographers know all about high contrast. So what is high contrast? This is an art term. Mm. What is this? Who's this guy? What yeah. is this guy? I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> mm -hmm. High contrast. I don't know who that is. That might be a singer. This is high contrast. Really. Yes. High. So it can be color. It can be not color. Very high contrast. Um, so very, you know. Uh, black and white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be, but um, yeah, very dark darks and very white whites. High contrast. That's the easiest way to think. Any questions about this paragraph? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. The Altamoda photographs, however different the subject matter may be, still possess Testino's vogue or Vanity Fair mentality. The costume's decorative nature with their rich embroidery and opulent patterns provides the high fashion quality of Testino's work. Most importantly, however, the images celebrate Testino's native culture. Opulent, oh, that's a good, that's a good uh, uh, adjective. It's rich. Yes, opulent is uh, rich or lush. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes, rich colors. You see it's very rich colors. The opposite of dull. 
it's a tribute to traditional Peruvian costumes, to their embroideries, their colors, the fabrics that are still worn in the Andes, Testino told Vogue Paris. I wanted to pay tribute to the richness of traditional clothing, to which the Peruvians are very attached. Still, if you go to Peru, you'll still see people on the street wearing this kind of clothing. She has very Peruvian features. Her face looks very Peruvian. Yes, it's very India. India, yeah. can yeah. I say? Inca, yeah. Inca. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I, uh, so that's it. Clothes are so nice. Yeah, very nice. Interesting, interesting article. I like it. Hmm. This is a good uh, website, the Daily Beast. Um, they have great Daily Beast. art. They have good their art section. I t I found that I really like their art articles. I found a lot of good ones on the Daily Beast. So um, some kind of stuff I never would have thought about. Any other questions about what we read? No, I think it's okay. Okay. So, uh, how is this photography different than other photography that you have seen recently? This photography has more color than others that I see recently. Mm -hmm. More colorful, more colors. Mm -hmm. are, more, are vivid, can I say? Or you vivid, say more, more vivid. Yeah, you said vivid? Vivid, yes. Oh, good word. Very good word. Yeah. Act absolutely. Vivid. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. More vivid, more in your face color. Like this, the mm -hmm. very, you know, very bright, brilliant. They use the word brilliant to describe. You can call it, talk about brilliant colors, which is like just vivid, rich, mm -hmm. strong colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder if I can find. I wonder if we can find some more while we do these questions. Oops. Uh, let's see what happens if I. Because now he's very famous for his. I, I had never heard of him before. I've never heard of him, but he's obviously famous for doing fashion photography. He play. He does photographs for all the big fashion magazines. Vogue. And all those things. So this is a, this is a serious. Okay, okay. I found some more photos here by doing the Google search, and you see, hmm. Um, again, high contrast. Fashion photography is often high contrast. Wow, nice. So some of this is models. Uh, I, I got a collection here. This, this is a model here, of course, but yes. uh, this is kind of combining combining the Peruvian style with fashion, with high fashion, automoda, high fashion. But what is, here we have an actual scene. Kate Moss. She's Kate Moss. Oh, is that Kate Moss? Okay. Yes. Uh, ah. Oh, wow. that's Cusco. This is Cusco. Yes. I love Cusco. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. It's beautiful. But there's not usually models walking around in Cusco <laughs> with high heels. You can't walk around Cusco with high heels. It's not possible. <laughs> but here we have a very traditional... This is very Peruvian. You have a, this Inca woman with colorful clothes and a llama. <laughs> or uh, it might be an alpaca, a baby alpaca or something in her hand. That's cute. So, uh, what's the first thing you notice when you see these uh, photographs? Hmm. Trying to find another one. I think these cultures have colors that in Europe we don't have co this color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're using colors that are not common in your and uh, in, uh, in in Europe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, most of these are, most of these are fashion photography. Oh, here we go. Here's a, here's one. This is from Altamoda. I should. Oh. Have okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, and what do you like most about these, about this work? Uh, the photo, the colors. Mhm. Mm yep, yeah, but it keeps coming back to the colors, doesn't it? 
Wow, I've never seen anything like that. Shishtaf, what about you? Mm, I like this uh, <laughs> blue one. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, it's a uh, big area of blue. <laughs> Is that your favorite color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice bright blue. Yeah, that's good. Let's see. If I type in Altamoda, I'll get more accurate. More accurate. More accurate. Oh, here we go. Uh, what the heck is this? Wow. That's strange. Wow. Hmm. Um, so have you guys uh, ever tried to do fashion photography or art photography? No, never. No. Regular from trip. <laughs> yeah, just of mm -hmm. travel photography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So sometimes people like to goof off and try different things. Uh, oh, here's another one, I guess. Oh, cool. Look at that Incan face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Look at the color yeah. of the stick or whatever that is. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. It's amazing. And the hood? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, these hats. Yeah, hat in English. Hat. They are hoots. They are hoots. It has hats. Dries and hats, mine hoots. And hats. How does that go? This is nicht mein hoot. What are you singing? It's a German song. <laughs> Yeah. German and English are very close. So since yes, Carl, I know. Since Carl lived in Germany, sometimes she uses German instead of English. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Hat and kind is child, and and uh, some very similar words. Schmetterling. Yeah. Schmetterling, yeah. <laughs> what? Schmetterling. Butterfly. Butterfly. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you guys could do a photography exhibit, what would it be about? Wow, that's really cool. But this is nothing. <laughs> I think it's model. <laughs> uh, maybe. Well, I don't know. And this says uh, from Altamoda. We'll see. Look at the backdrop, though. That's the same backdrop. Yeah. Uh, it might be. It might be a Incan woman. It's beautiful. There's some very beautiful people, uh, native Peruvians. That might be a model. I don't know. So, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what these initials mean. What means this initial, the name? Ah, yeah, I, that's what I was just wondering. What do you think it might mean? Maybe the name. But Isab everyone. Isabel Perez. <laughs> uh, everywhere is the same. IP. Mm. Maybe. Maybe about Peru. Maybe. Yeah. I am Peru, Avon. For example, I can be. It can say. Um, this blue I am blue oh, there, yeah, the blue one too. Yep. Probably it, it means I am Peru Peruvian. Maybe. This is. I wish this was bigger. Because that's an interesting one. Oh, that's a very typical Peruvian. Style. Yeah. So, if you could do a photography exhibit, even if it was an art, it could be any kind of photography, architectural, travel, any kind of photography. Uh, what would you, what would you do? I would take photographies from from the Mexican clothes, for example. From the Mexican what? Uh, culture. Que it's similar. From the Mexican culture, Mexican countries, Mexican people. Oh, all about Mexico. Okay. Now, have you been to Mexico? Yes, once. Not once, yeah. And where were you exactly? In Mexico de F, in Puebla. In and where? in Puebla. Oh, okay, Puebla. And in Acapulco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the colors are very, very vivid, too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, the very vivid colors. Yep. All right. I prefer architecture. <laughs> architecture photography. Yeah, I like I like architecture photography. I do all those things. 
Mm -hmm. Now to compare, oh wait, there's another one. Are there, have we seen this one maybe? Yeah, we saw this one. But to compare, we get to see this photograph from a long time ago. See, they kept their style. This is old? Photo. Yeah, this is a classic one. This is one from 100 years ago. Hmm. Yes. And now, uh, now, of course, we should take a look at, uh, at this song. Mein Hutz der hat Dreiecken. Yeah, in Spain is the same. Mi gorro tiene tres esquinas. Tres esquinas tiene mi gorro. My hat, my hat, it has three corners. Three corners has my hat. Had it not three corners, it wouldn't be my hat. And that's a funny. That's a pretty funny song. That's I fun. know in Spanish. <laughs> Mi gorro tiene tres esquinas, no, mi gorro, mi sombrero tiene tres esquinas, tres esquinas tiene mi sombrero, o something so. That's funny. Mi gorro tiene tres picos, tres picos tiene mi gorro. Yes. Oh, oh, I finished early, actually. Man, I can, I can even do an assessment. Uh, we have the same thing. We have what? Oh, you have it in Polish too? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my capelusz ma mój I It sounds like it has more syllables. Nice. Hat is capelusz. Capelusz. Oh, that's a much more, many, many more syllables than hat. <laughs> or, yeah. That's funny. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, hopefully I don't actually get sick. I was feeling sick today, and I hopefully I don't. Oh no! Sick. That's why I'm just coughing and stuff. I don't. I never get sick, but I'm feeling feeling sick today. Hopefully, I'll power through it. I was gonna have some. I was thinking about maybe having some substitutes and having somebody else teach my classes, but no. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do it. Ah, oh, moi. Moi kapelusz ma 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 Ah, uh, that's funny. Yeah. That's like. Uh, yeah. That's funny. So, um, I have my next class is going to be in a few minutes. I might I might leave a little early just so I can take a little rest. But my next class will be about. It's a food class, and this is strange. Coffee. It's actually not about coffee. It's about making food like dinner. Using uh, like a drip coffee maker, like you see in the United States, like a regular coffee maker with the where it has the basket up here, and the pot down here, and the so you can actually make. This is weird. It's a full make a full dinner with a coffee maker, and that's what our that's what the next class is about. So it's kind of interesting. I wrote in Spanish this lead, ah. the song. Tres picos en mi maigoro. Tres picos. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good song. I'm gonna have to. Whenever I have kids, I'm gonna have to teach them that song in every language. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then after my food class, I'll be talking about uh, the Ottoman Empire, the history class about the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. We uh, a few weeks ago, or about a couple months ago, I talked about the Byzantine Empire, how it was kind of uh, didn't work very well, but the Ottoman Empire was pretty successful, I believe. And after that, I will teach a music class about Adele. And I was I had a request to sing an Adele song, but I don't know if I can do that today. We'll see. I don't think that's going to happen. I would be coughing if I tried to sing Adele. So I don't think I'll do that. So that's my day. Okay. 
But Do you have this song like uh, this one, but uh, like Panie Janie, Panie Janie, pora spać, pora spać? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry. It's a French song, Frère Jacques. It is French. Jacques, <laughs> Donnerbou, Donnerbou, yeah. Somerate, Somerate. Right. Yeah. And I uh, heard in many languages too. <laughs> ah. yeah. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Yeah, you know, it's the same translation. <laughs> well, I learned that. I learned that when I was a kid, especially because my mom was a francophile. My mom uh, loved the French language. She was a French teacher when she was younger, so I definitely learned that. But I think a lot of kids learn it anyway. It's easy to sing. So, um, so this one and this uh, about this hat, I heard so far uh, a lot. Any translations? Translation. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to, to, to introduce your kids to uh, to other languages. Kind of fun. Yeah. I was uh, I remember taking some. I remember learning different things about Spanish and French and German when I was a kid. Just a little, you know, how to count to ten, how to say yes and no, and like things like that. Just so I knew about it. Just so I knew that other languages existed in the world. I think it's important, especially for an American. Americans are very. Uh, monolingual. <laughs> so, if I ever have kids, I might try to teach them some more about language. Anyway, I'm going to try to mend a little bit. I'm going to try to feel better, and I'm going to get ready for my next class. Thank you guys for coming. This is a fun Thank you. class. Thank Just you. Photography. And maybe I'll see you next time. See Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. See you.